federal politics is still a mess at the moment. Uh, Malcolm Turnbull, even though, uh, in my opinion, he had his uh, uh, big... Uh, well, he had a good week last week with the result of the marriage postal survey going his way, and uh, he was on the the winning side of that. But he managed to uh, uh, stuff things up again this week, and uh, adds back to the the normal uh, chaos. And uh, in response to uh, the same-sex marriage, how it's not looking like there'll be many uh, religious protections. Uh, some national MPs are threatening to uh, cross the floor and vote with Labor to establish a, a banking royal commission, which is easier since uh, the coalition are now two seats down in the House of Representatives due to by-elections. So uh, they've lost their majority on the on their floor of Parliament. Now, it, it resulted in uh, Malcolm Turnbull and uh, Christopher Pine taking the unprecedented step to suspend the, the House of Representatives for one week. It was supposed to sit uh, this uh, this following week. Um, uh, apparently, the, the reason that was given is so that the Senate could pass the uh, uh, same-sex marriage bill, and so the following week it would be ready for uh, the House. So it was apparently to give the Senate more time, though I don't get how making less sitting days, how, the, how that actually gives... The parliament more time unless are, are we meant to believe that the the house is just there to deal with same-sex marriage and nothing else well you'd hope not tim we've got plenty of other concerns in society at large uh we would hope that same-sex marriage isn't the most important issue in the nation i'm sure you could agree with that uh but certainly i think this is showing really uh and Ross Cameron put this perfectly on Sky News the other night, that the government is really uh, lost for options. Malcolm Turnbull is very much scaling on thin ice here. And that, that is why the, um, the Christopher Pine, uh, what a, a great man with some uh, quirky interests, may I add, uh, called uh, you know a recess, I guess, on, on government activities for a while. But... Um, it certainly, if not anything, doesn't really show the government's willingness to, well, deal with same-sex marriage or the citizenship saga as they market it, but it certainly shows that they are hot under the pump. Uh, this, don't be talking about Christopher Pine and hot under the pump, but, but certainly they, they are really, you know, in trouble here and this is a last resort option for them. And it got even worse later in the week when there was a damaging uh, cabinet leak which uh, revealed uh, divisions over whether they should uh, backflip on their opposition to a banking royal commission. Uh, Malcolm Turnbull and Peter Dutton, they were open to the idea, while uh, Treasurer Scott Morrison, uh, he... Uh, believe that the government should stand firm in its uh, uh, opposition, but uh, when the, the ca uh, there's a leak from the cabinet, that's a sign that a government is on uh, death row. I remember uh, in the weeks leading up to uh, Tony Abbott's uh, de uh, being deposed as Prime Minister, there are a number of damaging uh, cabinet leaks. And a lot of people have uh, pointed the, the finger at uh, Julie Bishop because she was the, the only one who uh, came out of this leak unscathed, or should I say potential uh, leadership aspirant. And uh, I've it's, it's interesting to, uh, to me, uh, I've concluded it could be the same person who is leaking now that was in, in 2015. I think that is the case. We have seen uh, Miss Bishop uh, behind Brendan Nelson. We have seen Miss Bishop behind Tony Abbott. And we have seen Miss Bishop behind now, uh, probably soon to be former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. So she uh, seems to be playing the long game here, or as um, some describe it, the Frank Underwood from House of Cards. So uh, maybe she's a Machiavellian kind of uh, dark character we don't hear or see much about, but I'm sure that she's quietly plotting away for some kind of leadership position. Now, Peter Credlin and the Herald Sons also mentioned this, uh, Andrew Bold as well, that if she doesn't get the Prime Ministership, she'll probably go to a, a, a champagne um, a sipping diplomatic role uh, somewhere around the world. 
But I certainly do think that Julie Bishop is guilty for a lot of the uh, instability that has occurred within the government. And uh, it appears that she does have the kind of the factional heavyweights behind her in being able to depose uh, uh, party leaders and prime ministers. Uh, dare I say, it got even worse for Malcolm Turnbull when it was an unnamed coalition uh, MP told Andrew Bolt they will uh, quit the, the coalition unless Turnbull uh, is replaced, and they said that Julie Bishop wouldn't be an acceptable uh, alternative and that Turnbull must be replaced by uh, a, cons a conservative or somebody who can appeal to a conservative. So that, so that brings a, uh, another uh, fr uh, fresh round of uh, instability. Now, I have a uh, fair idea of who this uh, unnamed MP is, I'm not going to say uh, on, on this show, um, but it, yes, it just adds to, I mean, uh, as I mentioned, after his, you know, good week last week, it's, he, he, his, his prime ministership is hanging by a thread yet again, and most commentators are now uh, believing that it's only a matter of time before he's replaced. So this unnamed source that... Uh that uh, Andrew Bolt on the Bolt Report, I believe, near, near a week ago, refused to name. Does his surname, Tim, happen to begin with H? Surname happened to begin with H? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so that rules out Hawke and Hasty as the Conservatives that that may uh, wanted to. Now, you know, that, that begs the question that uh, we we all presume that the moderate faction is a party. Uh, is the the faction that's in charge of the Liberal Party. Obviously, with the, earlier this year, we saw Christopher Pine gloating over the matter, uh, you know, laughing about same-sex marriage, and then you saw Tim Wilson and his buddy in the Senate kind of sneering at Cory Bernardi after the same-sex marriage bill was passed. Um, so, I definitely think that the moderate faction is in charge. And what's happening is the the conservative faction within the Liberal Party uh, are somewhat kind of jealous or angry that they lost uh, the power uh, where, where, when Tony Abbott was deposed. Uh, so I th certainly do think, but on, on talking on Tony Abbott, Tony Abbott's former advisor, Peter Credlin, uh, made a fantastic point in the Daily Telegraph uh, and the, I think it was in the Herald Sun as well, uh, on the parallels of Malcolm Turnbull and uh, Kevin Rudd, that they both kind of both kind of got big and broad ideas. They're both fabulous orators. They both got terrible uh, temperaments, uh, and they also have a real uh, challenge communicating to the people. In other words, they're elites who are disconnected. Uh, they've got massive uh, personality flaws that are kind of covered up by a great kind of charisma, uh, a great kind of confidence, and they both really love the sound of their own voices. Now, you know, an argument could be made that some of these uh, kind of personality traits are almost sociopathic, that they, in a sense, both men have the, you know, struggle to uh, understand uh, the party and the people and it's, it's Kevin or it's uh, Malcolm, and it's not the country. And I think that's the parallel between uh, these two men. And But uh, I think they were both catalysts for their kind of, their behaviour, uh, their temperaments, uh, just the way they are. Uh, these kind of destructive, uh, borderline sociopathic people, I believe they are anyway, uh, really caused havoc and wrecked both the Labor Party and the Liberal Party, and I don't mean sociopathic in the Dexter sense. What I mean is, in a sense, very hard to relate to people, you know, completely uh, driven by goals, very cold, you know, not very easy to relate to, but has a kind of a, an apparent charm or charisma to them on the outside that makes them votable or appealable. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much my breakdown there, Tim. Well, why don't we have a look at the issue that's caused this uh, fresh round of uh, leadership instability, which is the government trying to avoid a banking royal commission uh, being established. Now, uh, is it, you know, do they need to avoid this royal commission at all costs? Uh, 
It was interesting, John Howard's intervention uh, later this week when he called uh, uh, the uh, calls for a banking royal commission uh, rank uh, socialism. Now, obviously, the banks, you know, they they've been involved in a lot of a lot of uh, you know dodgy uh, financial uh, advice. There's been you know uh, already uh, parliamentary inquiries. The royal commissions, uh, in my point of view, they're they're, they're pretty toothless. Like they, you know, they dra they drag people before them, you know, lay out, um, you know, a whole bunch of you know dirty laundry. But they actually, you know, they they have their findings, and you know that's it. So it, it's going to be an embarrassment for the government if it's uh, established. But I've I, I don't see it being the the end of the world. Well, Tim, we did, we saw the. Um the John Dale uh, Royal Commission earlier on this year, and what what came out of that? That we need to raise the criminal age, you know, to twelve, and that we need some, we need to move kids out of, you know, whatever, get them out of the uh, the conditions that we're in. You could have picked up a copy of the Australian. You could have picked up a copy of the Age or any uh, any newspaper, and uh, you know, discovered uh, through reading an opinion piece. Uh, those uh, very easy uh, things to figure out. Uh, here you look, that Royal Commission costs $50 million. Now, we always say $50 million. Well, $50 million in the scheme of things uh, is uh, a lot of money. Uh, $50 million that could have been, you know, invested uh, into infrastructure. We were talking about Queensland last night. $50 million could have, you know, gone... Uh, you know, into stimulating a uh, dam project or something in Queensland, you know, that could have been a great, of a great benefit. Instead, we spent $50 million on the Dondale Royal Commission to tell us that the criminal age in the Northern Territory or the criminal age where you can be prosecuted, what have you, needs to be raised by two years. Now, I think anyone could have, could have pointed that out. It was a great uh, deal of a waste of money. Um, I don't think a Senate hearing has done much. Uh, Malcolm Roberts chaired one of those earlier this year into banking. That didn't really uh, seem to have much. Uh, but there, I think there should be an inquiry uh, and not a commission because I think a commission uh, is a waste of money. Uh, and it, all it does really is it's a bit like getting the special prosecutor out when Kenneth Starr uh, did all his business in the US when Bill Clinton was accused of of sexual misconduct. It's just airing unnecessary dirty laundry that may not necessarily be related to the issues at hand and uh, that will, I think, just be a massive waste of money and it will cause a great deal of uh, speculation as to whether, you know, the Australian uh, banking sector is strong. You know, it will cause a great havoc to share prices, thus affecting people's superannuations quite substantially. Uh, and and also uh, you were talking of John Howard. Uh, he called it rank socialism because obviously uh, we were talking this off there, Tim. Uh, ben Shifley tried to nationalise Australia's banks. I also see this Royal Commission uh, eventually uh, becoming a way to uh, regulate uh, and interfere uh, with the banking sector uh, to such an inordinate scale uh, that you had a, a, a you know a, a subprime mortgage crisis like you had in the US or you have a of a Greek issue. I just think that that meddling in the banking sector to make it more fair uh, really just has a, 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 a marvellous uh, chance, or well not marvellous, it's not great, but a sorry, substantial chance of, you know, creating havoc in the financial system, uh, regulating it. Uh, Fannie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, uh, I believe in the US, was that was a subprime mortgage. Uh, wanting to uh, give, give more ha housing loans to African Americans. Um, uh, so I think the Royal Commission will just end up in more regulation and more havoc. Uh, it will just be a complete waste of money and it won't really uncover much besides dirty laundry that is completely unrelated uh, to the issues that face everyday Australians. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net 
and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.